David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another review. From time to time, I like to mix in some non-fountain pen reviews, and today is one of those days. I have for you some leather goods from Night Heron Leather. I have two items. There is a single pen sleeve, and then there is a four pen case called the Quad. If you're not familiar with Night Heron Leather, they are based out of Bedford, Texas, which is right in between Dallas and Fort Worth. It's run by a gentleman by the name of Jason Worsley, and he was kind enough to send me these products for review. Uh, in regard to the name of the company, several years ago, Jason took up bird watching as a hobby. Uh, he was on vacation in Southern California, and he spotted a black-crowned night heron, which was the first bird he saw that was not your typical you know, backyard bird. Uh, when he decided to start his leather business, he thought the name would be a good way to combine his hobbies. So let's take a look at his handiwork. And in order to do so, will you please join me over here at camera two? As I mentioned, I have two Night Heron offerings to go over. The first is this basic pen sleeve. It's made from Horween Dublin Leather. Uh, Horween is a leather company based out of Chicago, which has been gaining a lot of cult following lately. Uh, their leather is known for being soft and supple uh, with little need to break it in. Uh, these sleeves are offered in several different colors. There's a, uh, there's a black and a brown nut, a natural leather. There's even a pink one, but that's a different leather. And this one here is the English tan. Um, you also have a choice of eight different colors of thread, so you can mix, mix and match a bit. And as you can see here, the thread on this sleeve is rather thick, so I feel that it will st uh, stand up over time. Uh, the inside is fairly soft. Uh, I wouldn't have any concerns about putting a costly pen in here. So let's actually see what pens fit in here. Here is my trusty Dudek Cube. I mentioned in my everyday carry video that I use this every day, and I do. And I have a selection of pens in here, kind of smaller and larger, that I thought we would test out. Uh, that First of all, this is a Leonardo Fiore and that slips in very nicely with its pointed ends. Now, I will say, if you push it down a little bit too far, it might be a little tough to pull it out of the end, especially something that's pointed and a little slippery like this, so you have to push up from the bottom in order to extract it. Um, this leather is a little bit thick, and you're not gonna want to really clip it on the outside. It's something that's meant to slip all the way in. Uh, here is a little bit of a smaller pen. This is the Wancher Sakai Suguru, uh, which was something I reviewed a couple of weeks ago that I just loved the treatment on. But this is kind of a, a medium-sized pen, and that fits in there just fine as well. Now, in regard to a couple of larger pens, uh, here is a classic pen LB5 Koseki, which is kind of based on the uh, Sailor King of Pen model, which is a larger pen. And that fits in here, but I'd say that's just about as large as I would want to put in there. It almost kind of sneaks out the top there, but I would feel comfortable having this one in here, but that's just about the size. Uh, just to compare, this is a Namiki Emperor, and the Emperor, no, nah, it's not going to fit in there. I, I, would, I would be forcing it in there, and I don't even think the clip is going to fit. So this is most definitely an oversized pen, so it's not a knock against this sleeve that it doesn't... Uh, uh, have the capacity for that. But for something like a Mont Blanc 149, which is a fairly large pen, it fits in here just fine. Okay, next up, we have this beauty here called the Quad. Um, when closed, this measures four inches wide and six and a half inches tall. It is made from what's called brown copper cowboy leather, which has some unique characteristics that I actually care for. Um, and it is paired with some nice brown stitching. You can see that brown stitching right there. Um, the case is bound by this long leather strap, and I do mean long. Uh, it looks nice when it's closed, but uh, when it's open, these two straps are 23 inches a piece. Uh, and they almost get to be a little bit much when, they're, when you have this open and they're kind of dangling about. It's a bit much. Uh, but it does, like I said, look nice when it is closed. 
Um, as with the pen sleeve, the stitching is really nice. Now, I'm not completely up on my sewing terms, so I'm sure there's technical names for these stitches, but you can see here that the stitches on the quad are straight, uh, and then back with this uh, pen sleeve, you can see that the stitches on here are at a bit of an angle. So it's just a little bit of a style between the two pieces. Um, when you open this up, you are presented with dual uh, two pen pouches. Uh, each is protected by these flaps uh, and the underside is very soft. Um, I like that the two pouches are separated here a bit so that when you have it loaded up, while the pens might be resting against each other, it's actually uh, between four layers of leather and it's fairly loose. So they're not bound overly tight, even with the straps. Now, there's some things that I care about this quad, but there's also a couple of things that I personally would prefer to see a little bit different. Um, you can see here that the sleeves go all the way to the top here. Now, pens will slide in just fine. Um, let's go ahead and use this Pelican M805 that I have, and the pen will sl slide in just fine. Um, it is a little bit tight, but I believe that it'll loosen up over time. Um, and here you have to be careful again not to push the pen down too far um, because you might find it a little bit difficult to pull out. Now, as you can see here, the stitching in the middle is a little bit lower. So that allows you to get your fingers in here in order to pull the pen out. But depending on the shape of the pen cap, this can be a bit of a challenge. Something like this Pelican is a little easier to grip, but something like the Leonardo Fiore, like I showed earlier with the pointed end, uh, is more challenging to extract. Now, like I said, over time, things might loosen up, but uh, I might have considered a design where the sleeves only extended maybe about to this point here so that the end of the cap could be exposed, but yet still protected by the flap. Um, and in that case, the pen might be, uh, you know, exposed from the side. So, you know, there may be pluses and minuses to both features. Um, and, you know, with the leather extending all the way up, it's really not designed for you to clip your pens in here to have them sticking up any further than the edge of the leather here. Uh, and like I said before, the leather's a little thick and so I wouldn't want to uh, have a clip on here for an extended period of time. Um, another thing that I really like here is how, you can see a little bit of how it does it, but how the leather discolors when there is a little bit of pressure on it. You can see it kind of change colors a little bit as I kind of stretch it just a little bit. Um, when it's in there tight, the leather changes colors, which kind of gives it a, a more of an aged look. It looks like that pen's been in this case for years. So I think that that's an, an interesting feature to this leather. Okay, let's go ahead and try some of the pens that I had earlier and load it up and see how those fit. Again, here is my Dudek Cube, and I showed you the Pelican and the Fiore. Uh, this is a Visconti Blue Ripple, which is a fairly large pen, and this one fits in there perfectly nice. Um, and you can see some of the discoloration here that just happened when that pen went in there, and I just think that's kind of cool. And that one is extracted very nicely. Uh, then here is uh, a really nice pen that you're going to see a review of coming up soon, which is uh, the Kickstarter from the Woodshed Pen Company. And this is called the Shimmer. And this is a pen that's on the smaller size. It's pretty close to the size of something like a Sailor Pro Gear. And that, that fits in there just fine. But being a smaller pen, you want to be careful not to push it down too deep, because if you push it down too deep, then it kind of gets lost in there and you really can't even grab it. And so you have to push up from the bottom in order to extract it out. So it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, then also, uh, this is the Namiki Emperor. And, you know, it's a little tight. I probably wouldn't keep my Emperor in there just because I think that you're not going to be able to get it all the way down without it coming up. But again, this is the largest pen in my collection, so if this is the only thing that doesn't fit in here, then it's going to hold the vast majority of pens. Uh, and then here's one more. This is uh, something that I recently picked up. This is a Micarta pen from Monty Winfield. I just really like 
that micarta look. And this is reasonably priced as well. So uh, that one fits in here just fine as well. And you can again see the discoloration that comes in on that leather, which I think is pretty cool. Overall, I think this is a pretty nice offering. Um, the Night Heron uh, leather site, uh, on their site, this quad sells for uh, $64.99 and the pen sleeve sells for $19.99. And I will put a link in the notes below where you can check out these as well as the other leather offerings the company provides. Uh, thanks again. Go out to Night Heron for providing these items for review. Uh, I think that they're very interesting and I will get some use out of them. And I encourage you to go up to the site and uh, check out these as well as the other offerings as well. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.